right, this is the last lesson on graphing absolute values and all those differences. And you can look back at it when you want to have a graph and see what happens when you're doing everything. It's really exciting, actually. And if you notice the tricks, you never really have to make these tables and you can figure out what to do. And that's really cool. So when it comes to my middle point of my graph, my vertex, which is either my high if it's going up, I'm uh, sorry, my low point if it's going up, or my high point if the V is going down, because they're all Vs, is the middle point. Uh, if there's no number that you're adding or subtracting inside the absolute value, then your middle point's always zero. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And then I'm going to make my table based off of that. I've been graphing this function, this equation, the whole time, just so that you can have a good understanding of what its base looks like. So when I substitute in all these values, I get that. When I substitute in all these values, it's different, though. Now you might say, why? Well, when I substitute in 1, it's 1, or negative 1, it's 1, but then there's a negative outside, so every value is going to end up being negative. And when I substitute in this value, every value is going to be half of what it should be. Because there's a one half in front, so everything will be cut in half, every answer. You can't cut zero in half, it's just zero. So graphing again, that's my basic function of absolute value. It's domain. Now I'm going to just write D and R because I've been writing it too long. My domain is from negative infinity to infinity on the first graph and it's from zero to infinity for the range. For the second graph though, when I plot the points, and I will plot it in a different color, The graph is a mirror image on the x-axis. It's like somebody took a mirror, kind of, and the graph is a downwards V, kind of like a pyramid or a triangle. So the domain is still the same. But the range, its lowest value is negative infinity, and its highest value is 0. Oops. Because range and domain are always listed from lowest to highest. It's lowest, it keeps going and going and going, but eventually it will go up to only zero. Now the reason why it's a mirror image is because of that negative. A negative in front of an absolute value will flip it. It won't be an upwards V, but it will be a downwards V. And then last but not least, this one right here, when I plot the points, I shall do so in black. is similar to the first graph, except it's wider now. It's, it's um, kind of difficult to say, well, it looks bigger. It's not that it's bigger. It's just that it goes up slower. So a smaller number will have it go up slower. But if I had a 5, it would just go up like this, whew, super fast, much faster than the first one. Domain and range are the same as the first problem. Graphing absolute value functions. I actually think that's very useful because it tends to be neglected or not as used as often as people would like. So when I first go over this, like say in a college algebra class, a lot of my algebra students say they've never had exposure to it, which disappoints me actually. But I suppose with rushing and curriculum, etc., you have to do what you have to do. I don't think it should be neglected. That's my personal opinion. I think that the math that we do is fascinating, so I, I don't want to neglect any of it, of course. Uh, with that said, we're going to be working with absolute values and inequalities. <laughs> no, that's not very high, but whatever. And see how to solve that. And it's, it's, it's a combination of both, but we're not going to be graphing, fortunately. We're just going to be uh, solving for it. With that said, have a great day.